Daddy's off to his man cave again. Bit of an unusual project this one, trying out a few new ideas. Stay tuned, see what I get up to. I'm starting off with a uh, Sapili bowl blank, which I'm mounting in my easy chuck on the lathe. Just tightening that up, then using a bowl gouge to true up the base and the sides as well. It's a nice sharp 3 8 bowl gouge. And uh, now I'm creating a tenon using the bowl gouge and the skew, just creating that dovetail shape that will lock nicely into the chuck jaws. Then using the Jacobs chuck and a 30mm force a bit to create a recess in the bottom. And uh, taking it out of the chuck jaws, zooming the chuck jaws down so that they uh, fit onto that tenon. Now I'm truing up the top, creating a little bit of a taper there. Uh, shape in the top now and I'm creating a dome shape I don't want it flat I want it domed so doing some nice push cuts across the top here a nice sharp bowl gouge just creating as smooth a dome as possible and just making a little hole in the middle there ready to drill out a bit I'm using a bottle as a mold an old water bottle checking the dimensions and then creating a little shoulder for that bottle to sit on just checking the fit and that's perfect that's just what I want Merlin 2 sander one of my favorite bits of kit and I'm just uh, power sanding that dome here we go a few twigs heather twigs and some uh, reindeer moss which is a type of lichen and some bits of gravel off the drive Mixing up some fast set epoxy, 5 minute epoxy, and then I've got some gold leaf, 24 karat gold leaf. And I'm wiping these little bits of gravel all over with epoxy, epoxy resin, I'm using my fingers, and then laying them onto the, uh, the gold leaf. And then rolling the uh, gold leaf around them, making little parcels. This sticks to everything, this gold leaf. Using the paper helped a bit. Just pressing it down onto the little stones. And then rolling them in gloved fingers. And that pushes down all the uh, the gold onto the epoxy resin. Gets rid of a lot of the loose gold leaf. And it forms some lovely little nuggets. I've selected three little twigs to make my tree. And just checking that. That's the right size for the mould, and trimming them to length. Just held them together with a cable tie for now until I epoxy them. And I've got my easy inlay uh, opals here. I'll put details in the description where you can get these. I'm using some fast set epoxy resin and I'm starting off with the viper green. And I'm putting some leaves on my trees with these uh, little opals. They're man-made opals. They're real opal, but they're made in a laboratory. And they are fantastic. So I put these viper green on to make the leaves, and I did add some of the uh, um, the marine uh, blue colour as well. Now I've got some of this lichen, and I'm breaking off a few little twigs, and I'm going to spray those with this copper gold spray. Just uh, gluing in my tree. You can see the little blue bits on there as well now. And I'm also gluing on my gold nuggets that I've made to make these gold rocks. Uh, just checking the uh, position and the fit. I'm using five minute epoxy again and I'm gluing in these little bits of uh, copper coloured lichen which are very very delicate. And I'm adding a few bits of the uh, Krakatoa opal on the floor just to create little stones. So I've got gold, bo um, gold boulders and uh, opal stones. And they're very fiddly. 
You're best placing them by hand with tweezers um, so you don't waste them. I'm painting the edges here with some epoxy resin. This seals the end grain and stops uh, the resin soaking into the wood too much when I pour the resin on. Blowing away any loose bits of gold and dust. And uh, I put my uh, bottle mould housing on there now. Using a hot glue gun to seal it and to fix it. Hot glue is brilliant stuff for mould making. This is the new Opticast 3000 um, polyurethane resin from MBFG. And I'll put links to this in the description. But this is fantastic, this resin. Really pleased with this. It's crystal clear resin. But it's got a very slow set, so you can uh, pour it in larger volumes. This is the biggest sort of single volume I've ever poured. It was about 850 mil total. Yeah, I think perhaps nearer 900 mil. I'm just pouring it in gently down the side because I don't want to dislodge any of those bits of lichen. And top it right up to the very brim because you will get shrinkage as it cures. Into the pressure pot. And this is a 48 hour cure, this resin, and I'd recommend leaving it under pressure for the full 48 hours. And then leave it for a couple of days after that, just to complete the cure. Uh, out of the pressure pot, and there it is, it's worked beautifully, no bubbles. You can see the sides of the bottle have um, buckled in a little bit. Now I'm turning away the glue using a Easywood Tools rougher and I'm turning away the neck of the bottle but I don't turn away the rest of the bottle because it's a bit dangerous it can fly off bits of plastic so I pull that off with a pair of pliers and then we're down onto the bare resin I'm using an Easywood Tools negative rate cutter here so we don't get any chipping out and just uh, turning that to round it's easier if you start on the areas that are running true and move on to the areas that are a bit wonky. Otherwise, you, you'll get a bit of clattering. You get a much nicer, smoother cut if you uh, sort of transition from a, an area that's running true onto these areas. You can see the little windows where it's uh, not round yet. Gratuitous uh, slow-mo shots, of course. You've got to put those in. Yeah. They look amazing, these ribbons of uh, resin, but they're a pain, really. Uh, I had to stop numerous times to clear them off the uh, clear them off the chuck and the blank. Uh, acted like a big fan. Here I'm shaping the base now, so I'm back with my bowl gouge. Just doing some push cuts, getting that nice and uh, flat, and then. A lot of sanding here. I'm using the Merlin 2. I'm starting at 120. And I think I went up to 600. And two coats of uh, cellulose sanding sealer. This is the chestnut product aerosol version. And then on to Yorkshire Grit, the original, which I'm putting on as a generous uh, coating and then uh, buffing that all the way. Keep working it and working it and it gets finer and finer. But you can see you can start to see the finished thing now. Moving on to Yorkshire Grit Microfine. Doing the same thing, applying a generous uh, coating of that and then working it and working it and working it. Uh, off the chuck. And then a quick change of the uh, easy chuck jaws. From these big jaws to these long reach jaws, these narrow ones. And these fit into that recess that I created in the base. So we expand those out to hold that. And I'm shaping the uh, foot of the base now. I'm using a bowl gouge and just rolling some cuts around there because I want to create this sort of rolled base. Parting tool, this is the uh, carbide parting tool from Easywood Tools. I'm just parting off part the way through. I'm keeping away from the chuck jaws for safety reasons. And then it's a, a bit of sanding, just a bit of hand sanding, and then uh, sanding sealer and Yorkshire grit again. 
Then we're off the lathe and I'm just removing that last bit from the base where it was passed off using the Merlin 2, just sanding that away. And then buffing wheel uh, using Vonax and just giving that a final buff just to give it that glass like finish. Complete. Really pleased with this one. Um, delighted with the finish I got on the uh, the new resin, and it's come out exactly as I um, as I wanted it to. Uh, I was going for the uh, Victorian curio look, you know, where the Victorians used to love um, the Victorians used to love putting uh, sort of specimens and things in these glass dome top display cases uh, with you know hardwood bases. So that was the kind of look I'm going for. And it's come out just as I wanted it. The new resin um, that I'm trying is amazing. Um, Opticast 3000 from MBFG. I'll put links to that in the uh, in the description. But it's a slow set um, polyurethane resin. Um, because it's slow set, it, there's a lot less chance of it overheating and causing problems. You know, if you cast it in big volumes. Um, so I'm very very pleased with that slow curing takes 48 hours to cure and I'd recommend leaving it another couple of days before you stick it back on the lathe I'll try and uh, show you some um, better shots of this in a minute a great magnification effect on that and my little gold nuggets uh, have worked well I love these um, easy inlay opals. They are stunning. And when the resin gets on them, they just come alive. Uh, absolutely incredible. Sorry there's been a bit of a delay since my last video, but life's been a bit hectic. And uh, thank you very much for a huge response to my last video. It's overwhelming. And thank you very much to all my new subscribers. I, I really, really appreciate you coming across and subscribing. And I'll be back soon with some more projects. Bye for now. I found the opals incredibly difficult to take photographs of. In fact, this video was about the best uh, way of showing the different colours and the fire in them. And it sort of, they change from sort of a reddy orange to a bluey green as you move around the dome. You get this lovely magnification effect. As I say, this was about the best shot of them, really. There's a few more stills. Um, some of them pick out the colours of the opals and some don't. I found the uh, pictures that um, picked out the colours didn't necessarily have the best exposure. And the ones with a good exposure really didn't show the colours very well. But these pictures give you an idea about, uh, about what it's like. But it's a nice heavy tactile piece. And... Uh, yeah, it won't be for sale because my wife has taken a shine to it and has told me it's not leaving the house. Um, but anyway, thank you very much everyone for watching and subscribing. I really appreciate it. Please like, share and subscribe. It all helps me out a great deal. It costs nothing to subscribe and if you hit the bell button you'll be notified when I next put, put out a video. Anyway, I'll be back soon with some more videos. I've got plenty of projects planned in the pipeline and a couple on the go at the moment. So I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Bye for now. More rubbish coming soon. Please like, share and subscribe. My daddy needs all the help he can get.